Hello, it's Jimmy here at O'Reilly's. have our Ford Transit Mark 7 to look at. Okay, so when we start the vehicle up, it's got an engine management light on there. Uh, these are some of the fault calls that we've got. We've got cylinder 1, 2, 3, 4, glow plugs. Um, particle filter is blocked. So the ones I'm not going to be looking at today is these the glow plug ones. So I've literally just plugged it in. These are the codes we've got. And yeah, uh, we're going to do a repair on it. So I thought, alright, we might as well make a video on it. Uh, this is the main code. P203300EC. Okay, so if we come in here and look at the live data. So we've got voltage 499 on that one, 49995 on the other. Let's give it a rev. So as we increase the temperature of the exhaust by giving it some revs, we should see the voltage move. See this one's moving, sorry. This one, bank one, sensor one. Touch screen is a little bit off. It's not calibrated probably, but uh, we can see that one's working. These are not moving. Uh, I'm not sure if it's got this sensor, number three. See, sometimes you can have uh, a thousand degree reading there, uh, but it's not fitted with that actual sensor maybe. We'll have a look underneath in a minute. We'll see how many sensors this has. Uh, if we go on here, we've also got the block DPF code, so we should have like soot loadings that are above where they should be, 182%. So you can see we've got one sensor there. So this one here is exhaust gas temperature number two. I'm just going to take that out and inspect it. So the plug looks okay. No breakages here on the cables. Okay, if we look at this sensor, you can see it's not old. It's already been replaced. So just having a chat with the customer, he said he's been having issues with this for about six months. It's had the DPF replaced. Uh, it's had this, these sensors, both of them replaced, uh, but the issue still arises. Uh, it's been back a few times and they don't know how to do it, how to uh, fix the issue really. Okay, here's some more parts that he's given me. It's got one, two, three sensors. So there's obviously a wiring issue, we'll go back under and have a look. Okay, so just strip back a little bit of this insulation here that's on it. And I can see it's had a repair in the, in the past, but that repair has come away, it's corroded. So I can I found the issue here. Got a broken wire just up there. This one. So we're going to get that reattached again, get some new cable on there. Okay, we've heat shrinked up a new piece of cable in there and we'll just insulate it around. Okay, so back to the live data. Give it some revs again. We can see this sensor is now working. As the temperature increases, the voltage will draw down. You can see this sensor here is not fitted to the van. It's only got two sensors under there. At least it had a original DPF fitted when it was replaced. Okay, so we've got to the bottom of this fault code. Let me just get it back up. Uh, P203300EC. I'm not sure why the, sen the sensor was replaced three times uh, and they couldn't get it working. Um, they changed the DPF. The DPF doesn't look new, so I'm not sure if it's a second hand DPF, but he said uh, six months to a year this has been going on. So it's possible it was fitted a year ago. It looks a little bit rusty already. I mean, it's just bare metal. It's possible. Um, or maybe they fitted a second end one, I'm not sure, but it's had work done, um, various visits to the, to the garage. I'm not sure why they just couldn't check the cables. Uh, if you fit a sensor and it doesn't work, I mean, everyone's probably done it at some point. You fit a sensor, oh, hang on a minute, it's not working. Um, but that's why it's worth checking the voltages to each sensor. Um, and just, just do that. Obviously, I haven't done that here myself, even. Uh, because we've got a few different sensors to play with and I just had a quick look and I can visibly see the wire is broken We put the wire on plug the sensor back in 
and just look at the live data rather than checking the voltages at the pins but if I did fix the cable and I couldn't see any any improvement on the live data here obviously then you'd go into checking um, checking the circuits have you got power have you got ground and maybe tr tr trace it back the wiring issue would be somewhere else um, it's quite common that it fails in that area so I've seen it before Okay, so the next thing we're going to do here is we're going to clean down the DPF so the soot loading is at a safe level that we can get this DPF reset. What you don't want to do is reset these values on the DPF while it's at 180%. He's going to drive down the road. These Fords have something what's called a thermal cutout, which is if you drive it down the road, it will try and do a regen if you've reset the DPF. And you're going to do a regen that's got a, with a DPF that's full, overloaded with, deep, with soot. That soot is combustible, it will burn at a higher temperature than the DPF is, is can handle. So you, you'll probably crack the DPF and the van will stall out. Uh, these these Fords, they will stall if you do that. They'll stall in the middle of the road. Um, I had one customer dinner to me before, he said, look, I, I can't afford the DPF clean, can you just reset it? I reset it and it was a real pain in the arse for me because he got six miles away down the A1 and called me back, oh, I'm stuck, the, the car's cut out, please can you come and help me? And I'm, I'm then in the middle of doing another repair here because he's left and I've carried on starting with the other repair. This guy's broke down on the road because he wouldn't listen to my advice. Um, so then I've had to go and help him basically and bring it back here and say, okay, can we clean the DPF now? Yeah, okay, we can clean the DPF now. Clean the DPF, reset it, take it on a little test drive around the side streets here just to make sure everything's operating before you start taking it on the A1M. I did advise him to do that, but he didn't listen. So if you have a Ford, and you're thinking about resetting the DPF and taking it down the motorway, it's it's very risky, so I, I, I wouldn't advise it. Okay, so we're just putting the fluid in here. That's connected up to the DPF up there. This is the fluid we're using, it's from Launch UK. Okay, so we're just giving it some revs. Just keeping an eye on the pressure now of the DPF as well. Okay, you can see we're idling at a healthy 4.2 HPAs, millibars exactly the same rate in there. Now that the pressure is down, we can reset the DPF, which is going in and reset the particulate filter values. Okay, clear these fault codes. Now that one should clear. And that resets that back to zero for me. We'll read the fault codes again, confirm that they've gone. Okay, so we are happy now with all of these live datas that are working as they should be. We'll just go back in and check the fault codes. Now I know there was some codes here for the glow plugs, but that's not what we're here to do today. And they won't affect the DPF on this model of the vehicle here. It's got a vaporizer fitted, which counteracts the glow plugs. Now it is advisable to, to change the glow plugs, but you know, if the customer can't afford to have it done right now, then that is obviously down to him. Okay, so while we're here, we'll talk a little bit more about glow plugs on these four transits with the vaporizers on them. Now, as far as I was concerned, every vehicle that's got a DPF needs the glow plugs. Otherwise, if it's got a glow plug fault, it will in inhibit the DPF. Now, that is true to 99% of the cars I see. On these four transits, it's not true. The DPF will regenerate without the glow plugs working so it won't inhibit the, the, the DPF regeneration but what, what your glow plugs will do is if they're not working they, they will generate more soot so your DPF will regenerate more often um, not only that it will generate more soot which will um, block up your vaporizer a lot quicker so you're gonna get soot that is covering the vaporizer and, and I I'm, I'm pretty sure that that's one of the main reasons why the vaporizers block up prematurely um, most of the vehicles I see with a block DPF have got faulty glow plugs or they've just had faulty glow plugs replaced. 
Now, as always, we do a test drive of the vehicle, make sure that we haven't got any immediate faults popping back up and that everything seems to be fine. What we don't want is a customer driving down the road, something popping up, and we realise that oh, we've left the plug loose or, or loose or something like that. But it's not often that happens, but it does happen to everybody. Um, so it's always worth just double checking the car before you hand it back over to the customer. So that's it. We are all finished on this one. See you in the next video. Once again.